Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch with some news that is going to be of interest to Vulcan game developers for sure, and especially people that are into ray tracing. That is, Vulcan Ray Tracing has launched today, March 17th, basically a one-year anniversary of last year's game developer conference, where ray tracing was all the rage. Vulcan is now a player in this game. And the cool thing about that is you're going to get a cross-platform uh, implementation of ray tracing. Right now, it's mostly did down to dedicated hardware or using Direct 3D, which is again, only on certain platforms. With this Vulkan implementation, we are going to see it go out even further. We've also got it initially on some device drivers. We're going to see that in just a minute. Now, this is the presentation. Uh, Vulkan was no doubt going to make it this year's Game Developer Conference. Unfortunately, uh, you know, that isn't happening now, but the presentation is available. The device driver is available. So we're going to go through that presentation right now. So you see here, Vulkan Ray Tracing is here. A set of provisional extensions uh, specifications are publicly available today for industry feedback. First beta developer drivers are shipping today. By the way, if you're not a developer and you're not working on this stuff directly do not install these drivers you know they're going to probably make your gameplay performance in other things terrible they're not going to give you anything other than of course the ability to run and test code for ray tracing on your hardware so don't install these if you're not a developer okay so coherent ray trace framework seamlessly integrates into existing Vulkan functionality flexibly merging rasterization and ray tracing familiar to users existing uh, proprietary ray tracing apis but also introduces new implementation flexibilities Hardware agnostic can be accelerated on existing uh, GPU compute and dedicated ray tracing cores. Now that's kind of cool because uh, GPU compute cores have been around forever. That means you're going to be able to use this technology on your existing device, even if it isn't an RTX device. So, um, you know, they, they kind of moved that way with DXR as well. So it could run on non RTX devices, but it's cool to see that right from day one, Vulkan is not going to require RTX to make ray tracing work. Uh, so uh, let's see, that was the hardware agnostic thing here. And then we got primary focus on meeting desktop market demand for both real time and offline rendering. Uh, so let's move on. So we got a bit of a ray tracing refresher. This kind of goes through the technicality of how ray tracing works. Basically ray tracing is really all about tracking the bouncing of light between the camera objects in your scene and light sources. And you can see kind of a difference between the rasterization and the ray tracing. You see, you get much more detailed reflections in alternative surfaces, um, but you are paying a performance cost for this by all means. Uh, by the way, this is from uh, Vulkan. It's under the uh, uh, Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License, and I will link this in the linked article down below. So if you want to go through this presentation yourself, you can do so. So next up, we got uh, ray tracing, flexible technique, uh, ambient occlusion, reflections, shadows, and global illumination. So those are the kind of things you can use ray tracing for. And this is kind of what we're going to see in the immediate world, where ray tracing hardware isn't really that developed yet, and some people are just going to use GPU compute. In that case, you can use it for some things. You can use it for just reflections or just global illumination. You can use it, you know, for partial calculations, you can have limited ray depth. So we're going to see kind of with more support for ray tracing, we're going to see a bit more mix and match approach to being able to use it. But these are the kind of things ray tracing does. Ambient occlusions, reflections, global illuminations, shadows. So if you want better light and shadow in your scene, ray tracing seems to be the future of this technology. And the steps to create it, first off, you create efficient scene geography. So um, ray tracing uh, may use a huge number of rays. Specialized data structures for interrogating scene geometry are necessary for efficient acceleration. Um, next up, we get tra you've traversed the scene with rays. So basically, you shoot a bunch of rays out into the scene. Uh, two ways to traverse: you've got ray tracing pipelines, a new type of graph pipeline, implicit management of ray intersections. Uh, application compiles a set of shaders into the pipeline to provide desired ray and material processing or ray queries. Any type of shader can launch a ray at any time, and this is probably on non-dedicated hardware. You're going to probably find it more using ray queries. Basically, a shader shoots out a ray and then the, the hardware calculates how it interacted with the scene and so on. That's obviously going to be more lightweight. Uh, so we've got the uh, transversal process, the rays generated, accelerated structural transverse. Did it hit intersection, hit yes or no? That's basically the, the process it goes through. I'm not going to go through all the technicalities of this, but again, I will link this article and I'm going to go through a couple of other articles that are available right now that go into a bit more detail. Now here we've got the ray queries, a lot easier. So basically query goes out, should I do it? Did we hit something, uh, generate detail or terminate? And um, again, any shader can launch that 
array query out. Uh, so uh, we also got the Vulkan ray tracing. Uh, so part of how this is implemented is actually via uh, shader or spur, uh, spur five or spur V extends. I always forget which way that's actually pronounced. You never say it out loud, uh, but you can see here we've got HLSL uh, front end parsing and validation, abstract syntax tree, and then you've got the spur backend or the DXIL backend. There is now support for the DirectX um, shader compilers or HLSL shaders to be compiled directly in. So that will make it more easy to work with Vulkan with your existing DX12 shaders and so on. So that's the nice thing right here. So go, uh, NVIDIA added code generation to DXC to generate spur V for the NVIDIA vendor ray tracing extensions for HLSL. So uh, you can use your direct 3D shaders with your Vulkan, which is kind of nice. Uh, pipeline library. So ray tracing pipelines can use many shaders, potentially orders of magnitude more shaders than traditional applications to handle diverse tracing techniques and material types. Compilation bottlenecks. Compiling uh, many shaders into ray tracing pipeline can be computationally intensive and cause application bottlenecks and stuttering. Vulkan pipeline library extension enables a library of um, spur V or spur five um, shaders to be incrementally compiled into an existing ray tracing pipeline, saving significant processing load. Uh, host offload of setup operations, a Vulkan ray tracing and DXR. So here's kind of where the two compile. So ray tracing pipeline, they both have one. Ray queries, they're optional. Uh, they require DX, uh, DXR 1.1 in the case of DirectX 12. Uh, languages you can use for ray tracing shaders. In the case of Vulkan, you can use GLSL or HLSL. Obviously in DX 12, you can only use DX 12 shader, shader language, the high level uh, shader language or HLSL. Uh, we got pipeline libraries, yes and yes. Uh, build acceleration structure on host, optional and no. Deferred host operations, optional and no. Capture replay support for tools such as render doc, optional and no. So that's kind of the difference between uh, Vulkan ray tracing and DXR. Uh, it should be a pretty seamless way to go between the two. Uh, they're right now, again, this is pretty early on and they are looking for feedback. This is one of the graphics you saw me use as the title graphic when we started. Uh, support is coming in or already available. No, real time Vulkan ray tracing effects in Wolfstein Youngblood. I gotta assume that they're not available as of yet, but it is going to support it. And yeah, essentially that's it. Then we got a little background or information on the Kronos group. Now the Kronos group themselves are the people in charge of things like OpenGL, OpenAL, OpenML, I think I might be making one up at that point. And of course, Vulcan. So, and here are the people that are connected to uh, supporters of members of uh, the um, Kronos group. And you can see it's basically everybody, including you might sit there and go, okay, well, why is DirectX being here? Well, no, Microsoft is going to be in this list somewhere. There they are right there. And then you see you've got AMD is in here and you've got Nvidia in there as well. Most of the major game engines. So pretty much everybody is on board with Kronos and the Kronos API is really looking like the future. So there's a total of 150 members uh, all around the world. So that is the Kronos group, the people that ultimately are responsible for or the Kronos um, graphics library, or the Vulkan graphics library, and of course, going forward for the um, new ray tracing extensions we talked about today. So as I mentioned, there are a number of documents here. I will link this as well. I'm not going into this at all because this is full on uh, technical hands-on documentation. So if you want to get into the specifics of how this technology works and how everything goes um, and how they um, the way they supported ray tracing was through a combination of extensions to Vulkan, uh, extensions to the shader language, the compiler that converts over HLSL over. So they got GLSL extensions, they've got Vulkan extensions, and then of course the new uh, DXC compiler. Those things all kind of go together uh, to provide the ray tracing support on the uh, the Vulcan side of things, but they did kind of keep the API consistent to what people are already used to. So there shouldn't be a huge learning curve if you've already invested in low level ray tracing work. You should be able to figure out the Vulcan stuff pretty easily. Uh, we've also got uh, the press release for uh, what we just talked about. We're gonna have a link to a number of the things we talked about here. I will link this as well. Uh, it's a bit of an overview of how things were implemented. So our Vulcan ray tracing consists of a number of Vulcan, uh, Spur V, GLSL extensions, some of which are optional, and then the details of what those actual extensions are, a little bit more about the uh, shader extensions and so on. So again, I will link this document down below. So now if you're wondering, okay, so who gets the drivers? Who can check this stuff up? Well, the answer is, NVIDIA. So you can go ahead and again, I will link this page as well. So if you want to go ahead and download the Vulkan beta drivers, uh, they are available right down here for uh, Windows and Linux. Uh, no NVIDIA Shield TV Vulkan drivers yet. Again, do keep in mind that this is very much 
for developers. So if you're looking at gaming or whatever, these aren't the kind of drivers you want to install. They're not going to make your ray tracing games faster. At least they shouldn't. What they will probably do is make your games crash more. They'll probably cost you frames per second in your other games. So I just got to caution you once again, this link, this driver that I'm linking here is really for developers only. But it is interesting to see right out of the box. You see here, this is where that GPU compute thing is important. So we've got a number of non RTX devices being supported right out of the box. And that is pretty cool to see. So um, even going back to the previous gen, the 980s and 970s, 965s and so on. Now I don't know how good your performance is going to be, but at least this, um, this API will work on a number of different platforms. So that's it. Uh, that is the new announcement we have. Um, you know, this ray tracing support. Again, I will link the drivers, but I caution you, if you're using it for NVIDIA, there is no upside to downloading and installing these drivers on your machine unless you want to work with Vulkan Ray Tracing today. And if you want to work with Vulkan Ray Tracing today, you will need to install these drivers. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take AMD to get an equivalent driver out. Hopefully it comes soon, but uh, it's kind of cool. So we've got uh, the world of ray tracing is getting uh, definitely more interesting and uh, and more accessible to everybody. So hopefully we'll start seeing it show up in more games, makes the hardware people have been buying more useful and uh, drives us into the future. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of ray tracing general, DXR, and now Vulkan ray tracing, the way they've implemented things uh, and all of that. And uh, if you're an AMD user, uh, it, hopefully you get something soon. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.